Okay, so I'm gonna set up this deer fence. As you will notice, I put a post on every corner of my garden. And these T posts are what you want is you want, so like if my electric fence is running down that line and it's running down this line, I want this fence to be three feet from that fence. So pretty much the two fences are gonna be three feet apart. What this is gonna do is it's going to make a 3D effect and deer cannot comprehend 3D. Um, a study was done in Iowa and this fence worked awesome for me last year and I we have so many deer come through here like all the time and they never got in my flower garden and there were a lot of flowers I'm sure they'd love to munch on. So it's a pretty simple concept. The inner fence has three lines. You're gonna see me do it, but if you just want a quick reference, there are at 18 inches, 36 inches, 54 inches. You wanna run a string line, an electric string line. So I run this poly wire. It's wrapped up from last year. I'm just gonna reuse it again. I took my other deer fence down because I don't think the deer are going to mess with those flowers. I think they're going to like these flowers. So on my inner fence, I'm going to run those three lines at 18 inches, 36 inches, and 54 inches. So one, two, three. And then on this fence, you want to go up three feet or 36 inches, and you just run one single line all the way around. I am probably going to need more posts than this. But I'm going to go ahead and run this because what that'll do is create a line all the way around, kind of like a string line to make my fence straight. And then I can come in where it starts to sag or however, I mean, you can really put it however many feet you want to on how straight you want your lines to look and how good you want it to look. Um, you can also get winches. I think that'll winch it down, but then you have to somehow secure your fences so they don't go in so that's pretty much it like it's that simple like it's a 3d effect you got three lines you got one line and the deer come up to the first line and they get a very small zap like i have i'll go over hooking this up too but i just have this solar powered electric fence um it's not a really strong one i got zapped by it quite a few times last year but it's enough that they come up to it and if they get zapped when they hit it, they also don't want to jump because they don't know how to jump into the other fence with the three lines. So it just confuses them. And I was so happy that I found this study because to me, this is one of the easiest fences to put up and it was really easy to take down. It's really easy to move if you need to move it and it's just not very expensive like you buy a big roll of this to go around and then you buy this was the most expensive piece and then I guess I already have my T post so this has been a really good solution for me so I'm gonna just run around and put the string line up it was probably easier on the roll than my handmade roll so we'll see how that goes <laughs> I'm gonna get to it So if I'm walking down through this fence, you can see the inner fence has one, two, three lines, and this outer fence has a one line. So I'm in between the two lines. Okay, so after I walk around and I just get all the lines done, I kind of cut them close and they're all kind of hanging there and unhappy. And I just tie some knots and I get them a little bit straight. So I'll just turn you around and show you that part. Okay, so I ran the line around, and if you remember earlier, I tied a knot, walked around the field, and then now I came, and I have the end of the rope, right? So I just loosely tie the end of the rope to one of the handles that I have. And then I just simply take this loop off of here, and I just run it through here because you never want any part of this touching the metal fence. It will ground out the fence and be no good. And I just 
hook it to my loop. But I kind of want my gate to be over here um, where the rest of the gate is. Do you see? So, so I just simply like pull it tight. Now, I would get shocked if I grabbed this and tried to undo it and it was hooked up. So I might want two handles here and they can go together and then I can grab them both. Um, because the fence, it, I like to have my fence on the three so that it is the strongest on those three and then I run a wire over to this third fence. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so on the other ones, I can turn it off and then unhook them and it's not a big deal. But this outer one, honestly, I used to just duck under it or climb over it last year. I never really messed with it, but you could have two handles to undo it. And I just did that same thing on all three of these. So I'll take you in closer here. So right here, I just took the loop off. And then I tied the end of that handle onto it and I just pulled it tight. And so that's pretty much how I get the wire going around the fence. So this side looks all nice and tight and good, but like this side, you can't really see it that good because the line's so thin, but it's kind of droopy. So I do need to go add a few more T-posts just to lift it up and make it not droopy. But as far as just stringing the line around and tying it off, like that's, this is that step. It's that easy. Like you put your little spacers on at 1836 and 54, you walk around four times, three times on the inside, one time on the outside, you tie off your handles to the loops and now you've pretty much got it where you kind of have a string line and you can just go add your T-posts wherever you want to make it not droopy. And that part of your fence will be done. <laughs> but I do have, I'm gonna go ahead and go put some extra T-posts in and then I need to get my grounding rods out of the ground and then I can finish up this fence. It's really that easy. Okay, I got my second T-post in. It's really hard to see these lines in the here. <laughs> but they're all in. The fence is up. It might be a little droopier because I didn't get quite halfway, um, but I'm okay with it. I do notice that I pulled it really tight and some of the lines are kind of leaning in. Um, there is a solution for that. But next I think I'm going to go ahead and tie all my lines together and then tie a line out to the outer fence and that way everything will be electrified by the one unit. So I'm simply just going to take a line and I'm going to wrap it all the way down. You could just go on the fence um, but I might as well hit the charge and go better luck that way. So I'm just going to tie it a simple knot. And then maybe I'll wrap it around this fence too for good measure. I don't think it's needed, but it's okay. simply just going to wrap it around this one and then around this one and that will electrify all three lines. I'm sure there's a lot of ways to do it. That's just how I do it. That should electrify all three 
lines. So now I just need one from here to here. Last year, I couldn't put one because I wanted to mow in between them because I didn't have the black stuff. But since I don't have to mow this year, I'm just going to tie one straight from one end to the other. be powered by this one unit and all I have left here since I have already put my hot wire on the lines everything's wired so now I just need to put my grounding rod in and I'll have my electric 3d deer fence so with the grounding rod it needs to be driven in six to eight feet eight feet is recommended um, so you just pound it into the ground um, I got a copper grounding rod I actually have two <laughs> because last year my fence wasn't working and we thought the grounding rod wasn't working, but it wasn't that at all. It was that it was grounded out. It was touching something on the ground. I think it was actually touching, like one of my lines wasn't through here and it was touching the metal. And so nothing was working because it was being ground out twice. When we took it off the grounding rod, it worked. So that's something to note. But as soon as I hook up that grounding rod, I should be able to turn that on and see a spark. I think I'm gonna try to get a pair of vice grips, hook them to the grounding rod, and then use the tire and chain method and try to pull it out of the ground. And if that doesn't work and it's really bent, I will just go get another grounding rod. But really, I mean, that is the end of, that's the end of it. And then this fence will work. getting those grounding wires out and then Nate actually drove this in with the post hold driver. He stood up on the back of the truck and he just drove it down into the ground and then we hooked the wire up. So I'll bring you in closer and show you but that's pretty much it. But for we turned it on and it is shocking so it worked. And then right here you want to put your grounding rod in between this screw here in the pole and that's it so i think that's it just a couple loose ends to tidy up and make it just maybe look a little bit better and that is pulling it up too too high so i do want to get that down but i think my field is ready for flowers i think that this is going to keep the deer out and as soon as the weather cooperates i have a deer proof flower field some of the ends are kind of tilting in and I do have something that will fix that. I'm not that worried about it, honestly, but I will try to find those pieces at home and maybe do a video on that at a later date. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. I hope everybody found this video useful and I hope you're having a great weekend.